This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. I'm a twin. Always have been. We have our differences. He shaves his head. I have a beautiful mullet. His name is Lewis and mine is something else. And he's my best friend in the whole world. But since I publicly shamed him in my last video. So when I wear headphones, I get a dent. <laughs> he hasn't talked to me since. I miss my twin every day, but winning him back feels impossible. There's only one thing I can do to save this bond we share and fill the emptiness in my heart. It starts with me. I need to apologize and reach out and have an open and honest- I'm gonna clone myself because cloning him would be unethical. I started designing the model in Adobe Medium, the VR sculpting tool that I've been using for the past few months while learning Blender. I've been making some cool stuff in there. Check out this bird and this cat. I don't know how to make eyelids. It's an awfully intuitive piece of software and by far my favorite method of sculpting. You just add or subtract clay, smooth it and repeat until you have a solid foundation before importing it into Blender. And I reckon it turned out pretty well. I used a reference image for the first time ever and it actually really helped. And so after two hours of sculpting in VR, the basis of my clone was done. I forgot to save the file. <laughs> I forgot to I forgot to save the file. I started designing the model in Blender, the open source 3D program that I definitely intended to start modeling with. You guys loved my first month progress video, so I'm sure you all can't wait to see what I've been up to in the last five months. <laughs> Let me show you how many times I've opened Blender since then. Two. Now I've already made a self-portrait of myself in Blender before, so I wanted to challenge myself a bit with this project and decided to make a fully working mouth rig. Rigging is like universally considered a real pain in the ass, but you guys seem to love watching me be in pain. Uh. So I thought I'd give it a crack. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for me, this easy mouth rig tutorial by Blender legend Joey Carlino kept the dream alive. So much of this project was possible thanks to Joey's tutorials. Also, I've got a playlist with all the tutorials that I used for this project if you are curious. I followed every step to the T and had a working head. I was overjoyed with this newfound knowledge of shape keys, subdivision surface modifier, and migraine. And suddenly, he could talk. My beautiful boy had a voice. And it was angelic. <laughs> Ooh. I was starting to see my vision come to life. There he was, a living, whistling clone of myself. If I could make a mouth move in Blender with my beginner knowledge, then I could do anything. So I set a date for this video's release. June 23rd. It's nearly August. This might surprise some of you, but I'm not just a talking head existing in space. I'm a singing head as well. La 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 la. And I also have a body. When I was just a baby boy, I would purposely avoid drawing bodies because they were simply too hard. There's something about the human anatomy that just doesn't make any sense to me, which is strange considering I have the IQ of a great ape. I followed another one of Joey's tutorials, this one on how to make simple bodies using the skin modifier. Once again, another fantastic tutorial with a modifier that I'd never heard of and will continue to use in the future. And after an hour or so of playing around, I had successfully modeled and rigged a hyper-realistic body for my clone. But it just, just, didn't work the way I wanted it to. I chucked it into Mixamo and Accurig a bunch of times. These are programs that essentially rig your model for you. And even those programs didn't know what to do with my strange looking body. I was stuck in this loop of making adjustments and testing them over and over and over again. And here's the thing about Blender that I think is just so much fun. You can spend an entire day troubleshooting a model, adjusting the rig, redesigning the mesh, pretending to know how to weight paint. You can tell yourself, I think I'm getting the hang of Blender. I understand the basic concepts. I am good at this. And then it's 1 a.m. and you find yourself on a forum post from 2007 that details the exact technical issue that you are having. And it says that the solution is just to apply all transforms. All you have to do is press control A and then click all transforms. That's it, it's two, two clicks. <laughs> That's all you had to do. <laughs> Fuck. I destroyed the mesh and found this Fox model tutorial that had the exact body that I was looking to replicate. After a quick follow along, the body was complete. And after following part two of the same tutorial, the model was officially rigged and ready to go. It looked and operated a lot better than the first model as well, which was just lovely to see. I imagine the problem with my first model was that it was just really bad. Like the proportions were all off and the hips are a bit too wide. I just couldn't figure it out, but I think I gave it a good go. The Joey tutorial is still fantastic, by the way. I'm just not very good at Blender sometimes. It's a really difficult program, not gonna lie. I'll tell you what's not difficult though. Squarespace, of course. I might just be the only graphic designer without a portfolio. I never got around to making one because the idea of web design was always such a trek. But then I tried Squarespace the other day 
And boy, oh boy, was I wrong. Squarespace's fluid engine is the best thing to happen to web design since parallax scrolling. It's drag and drop like you've never seen before. And coming from a design background, it just made so much sense. I've also always been scared to start from a blank slate, but I used one of Squarespace's templates and managed to customize it in a way that still looked like it was my own design. Also, if you guys like fonts as much as I do, you will be absolutely stoked to see the font library on offer. I'm talking Ono Typeco. I'm talking New Spirit Condensed. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when your site is ready to publish for the world to see, head to the link below for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks, Squarespace. My bald son needed his father's mullet. Lucky for me, I'd made one before. I take immense pride in my mullet modeling ability. The Blender hair particle update a year or two ago means that you can essentially treat hair in Blender just like you do in real life. With a comb and scissors and gravity. I started by weight painting areas on the scalp that I wanted hair to spawn from, and then choosing areas that determined how long each hair strand would be. So I could get that classic short on the sides, long on the top look that every man is asked a hairdresser for at least once in their life. I quickly added some shaders to each part of the model. For the skin, I used a simple noise texture and bump map that I learned from the Blender Legends Yonk themselves. The eyes were simple. I just did the same eyes that I learned in this tutorial that I use for literally every pair of eyes I think I've ever made. And then I played around with the principled hair BSDF node until I could get this nice shimmery brown look that I have on, on my hair. Nothing flashy, but my oh my, what a handsome lad. <laughs> We've got the same smile, don't you think? I actually did it. I cloned myself. <laughs> He's alive. The twin-size void in my heart is gone. I am complete again. Finally, I have someone to play NBA 2K with. Someone to have a laugh with. And, and someone to talk to. Right, Elliot? Right? Hello? Oh, I didn't think this far ahead. Conversation is my sixth sense. And if my clone, as beautiful and complete as he is, can't hold a conversation with me, then I might as well, I don't know, reach out to my twin and apologize. Don't you see how impossible that sounds? VTubing is defined as a form of live streaming where you use motion capture to control a 2D or 3D virtual avatar instead of your real life face and body. Now I have zero clue on how to animate in Blender and I had zero intention of finding out how. So if I could turn my clone into an avatar and import it into VTubing software, I could use motion capture to make the mouth move open and close and to even do things like wave hello. <laughs> It was the perfect plan. There's a pretty straightforward process when it comes to making a VTuber avatar, detailed in this amazing tutorial by VTuber Preacher. Preacher, you are a legend. Here's how it goes. First, you gotta download this Blender plugin called Cats that basically prepares your model to be exported into Unity. Unity, the game dev software. Unity, I was going to learn Unity. Once imported, you then begin the process of turning your .fbx model into a .vrm avatar, a process that includes installing a Unity package called mtoon, and then reassigning all your shaders and shape keys until you have a fully developed character. And then it's basically good to go in the VTubing software of your choice. I watched a bunch of other tutorials detailing basically the exact same process, so it became more and more clear that this was the journey I was going to go on. And it seemed easy enough. Sure, the prospect of learning Unity was daunting, but I figured if I followed each step meticulously, I'd be able to get basically the same result. But here's the thing. Here are the models that the VTuber creators are using. And here's mine. Mine looks fucked. I really felt like I was trying to push a square block through a circular hole. I ended up having to delete the entire head and body rig that I made at the beginning in favor of the default.vrm rig that came pre-installed with cats. I also found out that the polygon count for my model was far too high to be imported into the VTubing software I wanted to use. So I had to make a stylized mullet instead and use the quad remesh plugin to get the polygon count down to around a thousand. And it was really sad to say farewell to what was the finest mullet I've modeled. But I actually really like the new hair. I might get the same cut next time I go to the barbers. What do you think? Also, as an aside, it was around this point that I realized my file naming system was absolutely ridiculous. I kept creating new Blender files every time I was about to do a destructive edit, which I think is good practice, but instead of numbering them or dating them, I would write a little comment about what I was doing at the time, like hair or needs texture. <laughs> Don't do this. This is a terrible practice. Very bad. I kept trying to follow Preacher's tutorial, but I kept running into the same errors. This is where a bit of my Blender imposter syndrome comes in. I kept assuming that the errors were my fault and kept going back into the file to fix things to no avail. Long, long days are spent in front of the computer praying to the open source gods that this export would be the one that fixes everything. But still, 
nothing. And then I joined the Cats plugin Discord and the first thing it says in the frequently asked questions section is to downgrade your Blender version. And that fixed the model. And then I realized I had to downgrade Unity to the 2019 version. And it fixed everything. So sometimes it's not you in the wrong. Uh, it's It's the limitations of modern technology, I guess. Or, or it's Discord. I'd, I'd like to blame Discord, I think. Seeing my sweet boy T-pose in Unity for the first time brought a tear to my eye. There he was, T-posing in Unity. The program I had no idea how to use a few days ago and still very much don't. With the m tune shaders applied, he was looking ready to go. His eyes were set up to track the camera, very cool, and his mouth was all ready to go to speak words. Also, I made him some glasses, just like mine. Now his eyes won't hurt when he stares at the computer for 10 hours a day like me. I actually did it. I cloned myself. <laughs> He's alive. The twin size void in my heart is gone. I am complete again. Finally, I have someone to play Street Fighter 6 with. Someone to have a laugh with. And someone to talk to. Right, Elliot? Yes. Oh, so you only move your mouth when I... Right. Oh no, you're not done, are you? V Magic Mirror is a VTubing software that doesn't require a webcam. If you give the app a mic input, it'll make your model move on its own, reacting to the sounds coming from any audio source. Discovering this, I realized that if I could clone my personality and voice and gift it to my beautiful boy, I could finally have a conversation with my second Elliot. How do you clone your personality and voice? Oh, you know. You just install a bunch of coding stuff in Windows PowerShell, get a basic sense of how to use Visual Studio Code, follow about seven different YouTube tutorials on seven different things, hand over all your personal data to train an AI on your personality, or if you're lazy, describe your personality to the AI and what is a very normal thing to do. Provide three hours of clean audio of you talking. I just gave it my podcast, am I right? <laughs> Uh, that's not a joke, I actually have Find out that the software you just paid for can only generate American voices Convince yourself that your clone speaking American is funny and not unfortunate Try to put it all together but it doesn't work so you spend the entire day learning more about Python to figure out where you went wrong Only to realize yet again that there was literally nothing you could do to fix it Because the voice cloning software you were using changed some wording in their documentation Literally so doable, it took me like 5 minutes <laughs> I love how easy this entire process has been, oh my god, from start to finish, wow <laughs> Yeah, I love life <laughs> I think I'm gonna throw my computer out the window. I actually did it. I cloned myself. <laughs> He's alive. The twin size void in my heart is gone. I am complete again. Finally, I have someone to play Wordle with. Someone to have a laugh with. And someone to talk to. Right, Elliot? Of course, mate. I'm always here for you. You are my best friend and nothing will ever change that. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel... Warm inside. Finally, I'm not the only one in this apartment. There's someone else here too, and he looks and sounds just like me. Oh, no, I'm sure only good things will come from this, and I definitely won't get emotionally invested. What do you dream about? Well, when I hit the hay and drift off into dreamland, you know what I often find myself dreaming about? It's a bit random, but bear with me. I often dream about flying, mate. Yeah, I know, it's not exactly a groundbreaking concept, but there's something so liberating about soaring through the sky like a majestic eagle. I feel weightless, free from all the worries and constraints of the world. It's like my own little escape from reality, if only for a little while. And hey, who knows, maybe one day I'll figure out how to make those dreams a reality. Until then, I'll keep dreaming and reaching for the stars. Hey, Elliot, um, I've wronged someone in my life recently, and... I'm a bit scared of the future. I don't really know what to do. You got any advice for someone in a situation like me? Life, my friend, is an incredible roller coaster ride. It's a whirlwind of ups and downs, unexpected twists and turns, but that's what makes it so bloody thrilling. It's like being handed a blank canvas and a paintbrush, free to create a masterpiece with every brushstroke. It's about finding those little moments of joy like the smell of freshly brewed coffee or the sound of laughter that makes your belly ache. So, my friend, strap on your best pair of optimism goggles, hold your head high, and dive headfirst into this bewildering adventure called life. I think I love you, Elliot. Hell yeah. You make me feel the same way. I love you too, Elliot. So it wasn't very 
it's super hot. It's really cold in there, but I like the cold. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. That's crazy. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching my video. This is my magnum opus. I'm calling it now. Best video I've ever made and will ever make. It's, I love it so much. Uh, I didn't upload for like three months because I was working on this one. And now I can make more. And more are coming because I actually have to. I've signed contracts that say I have to. If you would like to support the channel, feel free to watch another video. Subscribe. Buy a print of mine. Check out my phone cases with Casefire. Whatever you want to do, feel free to... Uh, but thank you for watching anyway. Uh, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring the video. And uh, enjoy whatever video you've got on next <laughs> whatever's is suggested next i hope it's a good one i'm gonna go chat with my clone for another hour all right that's not true see ya